semifinal brackets will be completely full by the time this day is done. Maryland, the number one seed, punching its ticket in the semis. The game you just saw, and they will play either the winner of this game, Rutgers or Northwestern. With Vera Jones, I'm Lisa Bynes, and Christy Winter Scott with us as well. These two teams met once. Northwestern won by 20, but Rutgers was without a very important player. The big X factor, Rachel Holloway, was not there, and believe me, she can score in bunches in the paint. She's a huge defensive part presence. Rutgers will take on a Northwestern team having one of its best seasons in school history. To do that, you got to lean on a star, and they have a star. They have many stars. They're the only team that has five players in double figures, but none brighter than this one. A little coffee full of cream. She can score in bunches in a variety of ways. She's got lift. She's got drift. She's swift. You gotta love the yeah, coffee. Rutgers has the big three. That's a fitting name because there's three of them, and they come up big, usually. Yep. Rutgers, again, I would put this trio of athleticism and scoring power up against anyone in the nation. Copper, Laney, Skate, watch them all put the ball in the basket. Your Buffalo Wild Wings starting lineup for the Scarlet Knights. Davis, Skate, Canty, Copper, and Laney. For the Northwestern Wildcats, Nia Coffey, as we mentioned, back-to-back -back first team All-Big Ten honors. Maggie Lyon, Ashley Deary, honorable mention. This crew has got Northwestern to a 22-7 record in the fourth seed here in the Big Ten tournament. Let's turn to the third member of our team, Christy Winter Scott. Christy. In their lone matchup, Lisa, Rutgers lost to Northwestern by 20 points. It was 80 to 60. I asked head coach of Northwestern, Joe McEwen, what was the X factor in that victory for your team? And he said, we had great offensive execution. He's looking for that again today. Today. He wants his team to take good shots. They did a good job also of handling the defensive pressure by Rutgers. It was a game that took place February 26, and Northwestern was rolling on all cylinders and 20-point victory. Part of that perfect February here for the Wildcats that month, the first time in school history they've gone through an entire month undefeated. Joe McEwen. He says this team could be a team of destiny, but we've earned all the breaks that we've gotten. See Vivian Stringer, one of the legends in coaching, returns to the Big Ten. It's been fun to watch her back. Already the winningest Big Ten coach in the history of the conference and creeping up on some of those all-time records with the Scarlet Knights. We are just about moments away here. From the opening tip here with this 4-5 matchup. Northwestern and Rutgers meeting for the second time this year. I feel a nail biter coming on already. Wildcats just playing a few miles away from their home in Evanston, Illinois. First shot won't fall for Rutgers. Big rebounding teams, both of them. Turnover for Northwestern. Twenty wins for the Cats. Twenty or nineteen of their twenty-two coming against ranked opponents or those receiving votes here this year. The first time since the mid-90s they've won about twenty games. Little Ashley Deary, I love the way she pushes. A rare turnover for her. Scott to the push <laughs> behind the back look, and Copper couldn't finish. Oh. Roser with the reverse. And Cohen call for the travel. This is a pretty pass. Are you kidding me? Skate just finds it. That's when you pull Copper aside and say, girlfriend. You have to finish. <laughs> You're making me look bad. <laughs> Beautiful pass. Would have been a wonderful highlight. <laughs> Out to Canty. Both these teams struggling to get on the board. These are two very quality teams, the 4-5 matchup. 
always a good one. Like I said, a nail biter. I just feel it. Copper will take a turn. Kalia Copper leads the team. 16 with four points per game. Very solid score, about 47%. Not big three-point shooter. In fact, she's only taking two. And a team high 16 against Indiana on Thursday. Good look inside, and that's what they want. They got to get in there. Laney with the rebound. They get it out to Tyler Skate. Skate with the take, rejected <laughs> by Nia Coffey. Don't bring that in my house. They'll give it back to Coffey. Coffey showing one of the reasons why she is an all Big Ten honoree. Maggie Lyon with the hesitation. Good hustle. Ashley Deary may be short in stature, but she plays twice her size when it comes to playing passing lanes and being aggressive on defense. One of the best in the nation in steals. Copper with the take, and she's got all four points of the game. That was in 3.1 steals per game. Copper, nine to shoot for Northwestern. To Roser, looking for Cohen. Rutgers forcing the turnover, gets it out to Laney for the reverse. If there were one player that I said is pro ready now, there she is. The Nigel Laney, her skill set is just one that leaves me in awe. She runs the floor, she's got a great athletic body great athleticism, and she's smart, and she's got a true passion for the game. Four turnovers here for Northwestern. Still has yet to score until there. Alex Cohen for two. Excellent lead. Alex Cohen in the paint. She could do some damage if they continue to feed her the ball. Tips again oh, for Coffey. I think Coffee's got an extra level. Usually hot on the offensive, and she's got a little. To double check, talk to your agent today. The 4 5 seed matchup. Rutgers ahead 6 to 2 Northwestern. How about the February that they had for the first time in school history going unbeaten in a single month? Very nice, February, the month of love. They're loving that stat right there. Can they keep it going, extend the love into March? That's the big question. First day in March, they lost their first game in nine games, but it was to the top seed, Maryland. Well, that didn't count. <laughs> <laughs> this is their second game played in March, and their first game here in the Big Ten tournament, earning themselves the double bye. Down low to Cohen. She has all four of Northwestern's points. And a good, again, for Northwestern, that's a good look for them. They want to go inside right now without Holloway or Butts. Rutgers not really, really big inside. And Krista Evans, one of their big posts that they tend to dominate with as they rotate them in and out. Copper will take it again, this time from the right side. Six of the eight for Copper. Again, Kalia Copper, an athletic scorer who can heat up in a minute. Northwestern's got to do a better job knowing where she is. The backside help coming. Northwestern will get it out from underneath. Down four. And another turnover here for the Wildcats. Well, this just spells get to the get to the hoop for them. Copper has it back to back buckets. This is exactly what they want. They want steals and they want to push and transition. Eight points for Copper. She's made her last four shots. Joe McEwen is forced to call a timeout. 
turnovers. Quarterfinal women's tournament action continues later today on BTN. The seven-seeded Huskers take on the Iowa Hawkeyes tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. Another one of those third meeting matchups between the Hawkeyes and the Huskers. Iowa won the first two meetings between those two teams. Of course, this one coming without a Rachel Terrio for Nebraska. Backdoor look. Laney was all over it. Ashley Deary typically doesn't throw him away like that. Ashley Deary was so instrumental in the one game where Northwestern met Rutgers. All Big Ten honorable mention. Ashley Deary has 141 assists. And only half of that in turnovers. Two turnovers. Very good ratio. Rutgers working it around to Siasens Davis out to Laney. And that one, I think Cohen got the piece of that. Well, there's a lot going on inside of the paint. You've got teams that like to penetrate the paint and kick. You have teams that want to get it to the post. And again, you have great shot blockers on both sides. Laney with coffee all over. Shot clock was at three. That's that kind of high hand I'm talking about. Deary decides to take it. Gets tied up. The takeaway from Copper. <laughs> we have two of the best defensive players in conference here. It's going to be fun to watch Davis and Deary go at it. <laughs> Davis leads the conference in steals. Deary right on her heels. Literally. <laughs> Twelve different offensive possessions for Northwestern. They've turned it over seven different times. Coffee with a little step back. Roser trying to keep it alive. It'll go out of bounds, and Rutgers will get it. And here's the craziness. Deary comes down, loses control of the ball, and then it's just, hey, give me that from Kalia Copper, and they go the other way. Turnover story. A prominent one here early on. More turnovers than points. That's never a stat that you want to have. Nope, nope, not for any coach. Scaife with the pull up, nothing but net. She's got a nice release, very smooth. Kristen Inman in for Northwestern. Inman has started 22 times this year, suffered an ankle injury, missed three games. Now coming off the bench here for the Wildcats, our team that Joe McEwen likes to say they have about seven starters. Lauren Douglas now in for Northwestern as well. Here is Douglas on the wing. Seven to shoot. Douglas forcing it. The shot clock won't reset. Lions got to launch it. Great defense. Great and defense. Northwestern will keep it. Four points for the Cats, all coming from the senior Alex Cohen here so far. Got to find another way. Cohen out of the game right now. A foul on the penetration. Kalia Copper, that was just a hack. Probably not the best defense, and you can see the defensive queen over there not happy. Vivian Stringer, known for defense. Now, when you do that, you're just fouling. That's just foul. A three attempt for Coffee, and she can't find her rhythm. 0 for 2 now on the day. Skate taking it, an offensive foul call. Lauren Douglas standing still. Good job on Douglas Park to get back and try to beat her to that spot to get as still as she could. It's always a tough call. But she squared up, beat her to the spot. Coffee with the turnaround. Still scoreless. 
Coffey does that spin move with that left hand. It throws defenses off. Here's Canty, and Coffey got her on the take. Not the hottest of starts here for the number four seed. Rutgers leading by eight. Advantage Rutgers over Northwestern. Here's Christy Winter Scott. We're here with assistant coach for Rutgers, Tia Jackson. Tia, in this first part of the first half, what have you liked offensively so far from your team? I like the fact that we're attacking, we're being aggressive on the boards. Uh, we've got to finish those easy bunnies that we're missing, but our jump shots are hitting, and that's all we can ask for. Thanks, coach. Thanks, Rutgers doing what it does best. Some transitions, some mid-range jumpers, all six of their field goals. Three have come in the paint. Three have been mid-range jumpers. They're not a three-point shooting team. They only make about two per game. In fact, there's been 12 games where they haven't hit anything from three, or they've hit one three-pointer, and they're 10-2 and two in those games. They're just not a three-point shooting not team. Not at all. They have one pure three-point shooter specifically recruited for that job and Cynthia Hernandez. We'll see her right before the half. And that another turnover here for the Wildcats. Eight now for Joe McEwen. But I think Cynthia Hernandez is credited with those two that they make per game. <laughs> I agree. That's the Hernandez stat. Uh-huh. Laney shuffled her feet. Yeah, if it wasn't that, then she was sitting in a three for a minute. This is a great offensive executing team. They are patient, and you see that's the end result that they're looking for. Douglas with a big basket. A needed basket in the paint, actually. Nine field goals between these two teams. Twelve combined turnovers here so far. It's been a slow start in this 4-5 matchup. A six-point advantage rejected from Douglas. And, and <laughs> Lady gets it right back. Out to Copper, who uh, finishes it off for two. I think Copper can change her body in about three different directions while she's in the air. Face front profile, reverse. Honestly, good block. Big defense on the interior and then on the perimeter. And then Copper, again, kind of a crazy finish, but she's got great athleticism to finish it out no matter what kind of contact she takes. Already in double figures with 11. She missed her first two shots of the day. She has made her last five. Nine points, Scarlet Knight advantage. Two players have scored here for Northwestern. Coffee still scoreless. And a foul on the drive. The one thing about Coffee, she is really, really quick. She can pull you out on that perimeter. Now, she can do a lot of things inside because she's got good size and she can leap. But she's quick on the drive. Copper whistled for her second with 10 minutes to go in this first half. So she'll take a seat and Canty will come in. Copper has 11 of Rutgers 15 points. And she's not going to be in the game right now for the Scarlet Knights. Northwestern's going to make a move. A chance to do it here. Talk about quick. Just keep your eye on little number three, Deary. Coffee with the spin ran right into Davis and Laney. And I can tell you Rutgers has probably watched plenty of film and know that she likes that spin move, so they bring over help in the nick of time. Here comes the spin, here comes the help. Coffee still has no points, has not made a shot from the floor of the free throw line. The Big Ten Digital Network, now BTN Plus, available on BTN to go. Subscribe to BTN Plus and gain access 
to hundreds of non-televised games. Get BTN Plus available on BTN to go. Coffee with her first point of the day. Canty down low to Holloway, the difference maker into the game for Rutgers. And a steal from Syasis Davis that ties her for the program record. Canty for two, but an offensive foul call. Little Deary slipped in and took that charge. But what a great seal from Holloway. Again, she didn't play in that first game. Syacence Davis with that takeaway ties Tasha Pointer for the all-time school record. She needed one to do it. 292 in her career. Maggie Lyon from deep. with the take Ooh. over the outstretched arms of Holiday. That lefty J, nice and high off the glass. Got to get it up that high with all that red in the paint. Davis thought about it. Across the skate. Deary on the transition, hesitates. Yep, they gave her the chance. Gives it out to Coffee. Her works her way down for two. It was not easy. Nothing has been easy. Go at it today. And then coming down, Canty a little bit too much. So that's the way Deary got it back. And that's what you have to do. She loses the ball, but she makes a great play, sacrifices her body to get it back. Davis fourth in the country in steals per game. She's first in the Big Ten. Part of reason why she was the, the defensive player of the year this year when the postseason honors came out. Came off the bench 10 of the first 12 games until Brianna Canty got injured. Really became a starter in the back half of the season. Canty down low to Holloway. The kick out to Canty, that's a two. With the board, she has Northwestern's last five points, and she loses it. Frustrated. Good defense by recovery defense, however, by Rutgers. They got back. They were in the paint. They were ready. They have to know that this team will run in transition, but Coffee totally just loses the ball. Otherwise, there was a big move to the basket coming up. Northwestern has tied itself with turnovers. 11 points, 11 turnovers. Holloway there for two. She made a difference in that Indiana game. Started that game three for three. She's got four here today. Well, you see what a difference she's making in this game already. She has that size that just helps them in a way that, I mean, this is a team that likes to run, but they like to look for the high-low. They'll find her inside. Rachel Holloway was not part of that first meeting for Northwestern. The 12th turnover out to Davis for two. Again, Syessence Davis, she might be the only thief I actually like. She's pretty amazing, and she's got Rutgers up at the moment. Just a great defense. Bang, bang thing for her, and now the record is all hers. 294. For her assistant, Tasha Pointer. Tasha Pointer, she was one feisty one back in the, I think she graduated 2001. But uh, she was a thief indeed. Now she's a mom, a recent mom. Actually, she's on her second child, just, just had. Davis whistled for the second personal. Pointer, part of the Final Four team in 2000. with the turnaround. They've got their offense back in the game. Yeah, I like it when they uh, when they work the ball inside to Cohen because I think she's so efficient on the inside. And once she gets going, that's when that perimeter opens up. Maggie Lyons fight the score from behind the arc. Down to Holiday again, making a difference. But look out, she came down awkwardly. Mm, and that knee, Holiday has had some serious problems. She has suffered with a, that's a, that's a really bad sound. She's had some bad knees before.
Holloway started the game yesterday, three for three off the bench. Three for three here today. Missed the last game when they played Northwestern because of a groin injury. And she has been such an important presence when she's healthy for Rutgers. It's very, very tough to see this. You know that pain, you know that sound. Again, she goes up and when she comes down, looks almost like she stepped on a foot, but when she fell, it almost was like the right foot twisted. You can see the concern of the Rutgers fans. Such an important piece here to the Scarlet Knights basketball team. We'll take a quick timeout. Rachel Holloway off the court. An awkward fall. Christy Winter Scott, what more information do you have? Well, the training staff just said that they're going to take Rachel Holloway to the back to the training room to evaluate her right knee. She did not put any pressure on it as she was coming off the court and looked like she was in a tremendous amount of pain. Lisa? She's trying to apply a little bit of pressure now. Kalia Copper had to make the free throw for Rachel Holloway. Again, Holloway missing the first meeting between these two teams. Into today, she was a perfect three for three from the floor and a foul away from the basket. So we'll keep an eye on Rachel Holloway. Meanwhile, her teammates will keep an eye on how much they rally together and play that much harder for her. You see Ariel Butts in for Rachel Holloway. Ariel Butts has started eight times this year in that center spot for Rutgers. Again, one of the presents they have is that they have three posts, including Holloway as well as Krista Evans, that they rotate pretty regularly. So not only is it quickness that Rutgers is able to excel with, but when they bring those three in and make them a critical part of the offense, they also have great size on the inside. Scaife going to go right at Cohen. And a foul after the shot. <laughs> Roser with her first. Six to play here in the half. So spread and start working the offense. Little double stagger on that weak side. We'll see if Skate connects. Nothing. Good defense from Northwestern. Davis from up top. One of the weak... <laughs> Reasons Northwestern did well is uh, they really went to, to battle on the boards with this team. They don't want to fall behind against a Rutgers team, especially allowing Rutgers like Laney to get the offensive glass. 75 seconds here for that possession. Mm. And Rutgers ending it with a bucket. An offensive foul call there on Northwestern. Alex Cohen, her second. There's the turnover story. 13 points for Northwestern, 13 turnovers for the Wildcats. And that definitely is a good score with so much time left to play, but that's what Rutgers does. They have 
just, just one of the best teams that just taking you out with steals, actual steals for possessions. Nia Coffey, her second. And now in a one and one situation. Tyler Skate and Rutgers looking to make it back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since the 2011 and 2012 season. Again, one of the big advantages that Northwestern had in that first meeting, in that first big win, was points in the paint, 54 to 36. And yet in this contest, they're struggling to get in the paint at all. They got a foul on the block out. The free throw is good, but the foul on Ariel Butts for Rutgers. So back the other way we go. Lauren Douglas at the free throw line. Three players have scored for Northwestern. Douglas with three, Coffee with five, and Cohen with six. Cats get it right back. Down 14. Coffee dancing her way through traffic. <laughs> dancing indeed. I almost thought, I mean, she uses that. I, I, it's not even a year old. Yeah, it is. She uses that and gets to the basket. I thought she was about to take another step, which would have been a foul, but great body control. Dancing was exactly what that was. Nia Coffey, the highest ranked recruits for Joe McEwen. And one of these building blocks, one of the freshmen last year, who shows some signs of what could happen here mm -hmm. for this Northwestern program. They say that sophomore class, those freshmen from last year, if you've seen it in this conference, the Big Ten, but apparently across the nation, it's a very, very good class, recruiting class. Northwestern three of seven from the free throw line. All kinds of problems here in the first half for the Cats. Brianna Canty for two. If there's one area that this team is extremely vulnerable, it's at the elbows. They've got to lock those up. Everything is going right here for Rutgers in this half. Now baseline out of bounds that can open things up. Very difficult. Off the backside there of Lauren Douglas. They have a three second call. Joe McEwen wearing the mic for us, trying to find any sort of answer for his team. Just go four game out of it. You got to switch, get to the block, get the ball reversed. High low. You're going to have lobs, right? Yeah. All right, we're fine. Here we're go, fine. Hey, like, they got two hands on us. We're trying to cut. They're just grabbing us, okay. man. Every time we cut, they got two hands on us, and just chucking us now. Joe McEwen, right before the break, getting a warning from the officiating staff. So maybe oh, sit oh. in the corner and yeah. behave yourself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love Joe's antics. Oh, now it's Vivian's antics. <laughs> Vivian's out on the floor. At least Joe is, you know, sideline. <laughs> Joe is taking his seat. Yep, I'm gonna sit right here. Vivian, oh, she really, she was all out on the floor on that one in disbelief. <laughs> Ooh, 
Meanwhile, Syessence Davis whistle for her third personal. Sharita Parker will come in for. <laughs> Douglas makes good on the second. She's still got a little look to her. <laughs> Scaife in and out. Christy, you have a Rachel Holloway update? Well, the training staff says that they're still evaluating Rachel Holloway in the back. Her parents, before the last time out, they were escorted to the back to see exactly what is going on. As soon as I know exactly, I will let you guys know. Thank you. Thank you for that update. It's been a rough couple of weeks here injury-wise for Rachel Holloway. Injured herself in that Michigan State game February 22nd. A groin injury kept her out of games, including this Northwestern matchup back on February 26th. It was a contributor yesterday in the Indiana game, was contributing already early here. And we hope the best here for Rachel Holloway for sure. At the point of the game, key possession for Rutgers, but definitely key defensive set right now before we get ready to go into the locker room. Over and back call. And guess who comes into the game? For those that don't know, there is a three-point shooting specialist in the building. Her name is Cynthia Hernandez. Number 13 for Rutgers. Keep an eye on her. Rutgers typically they will bring her in right before the half because now they're going to have the match for that three and the that three cutting the lead to nine. So it's within reach for this Northwestern team. They can feel that. And that's something Rutgers don't want they, them to take into the locker room. Part of a 6 nothing Wildcat run. A kick out to Hernandez. Dumps it down to Evans who can't handle it. Evans not ready for it, but Lyon is always ready for this. That smooth lefty jump shot she shoots with so much confidence. Maggie Lyon shoots 42% from back there. Northwestern keeps it. Rutgers on the offensive side. Three turnovers the last four trips. Lyon and the Wildcats trying to make a little bit of a push here in the final three minutes of play. Lyon again draws the body in the contact. <laughs> Maggie Lyon, one of the juniors on this team. Last season to this season. Been a little bit more efficient as a shooter. And that's saying something. Had a big bucket with under two seconds left to force overtime against Wisconsin. One of those down-to-the-wire games that Northwestern had to survive in that month of February. Mm -hmm. Trail by seven here. Well, the good thing is, is Northwestern is peaking right when they're supposed to be. And that should go well for them in this conference tournament. But they have their hands full trying to get back into this game with Rutgers. a look at trying to get a look at who that ball really went out on. Canty walked with it. Stay tuned at the half for the State Farm Halftime Report. Rick Pizzo, Shelly Till in our Big Ten studios. They're going to be there all day. The second of four games here on the Big Ten Network. Quarterfinal Friday. We're watching Northwestern trying to make a little bit of a push. Down seven. Started the game two for ten. Since they've been five for seven. Maggie Lyon again. This is Rutgers on the run. What they like to do. Oh, so critical. Soft touch for Tyler Scaife. She's got eight.
Douglas with the take. <laughs> Vivian Stringer <laughs> walked around. She wanted to know exactly what was that call. <laughs> Our Motel 6, sixth player of the game, is Lauren Douglas. What she did in the last meeting against Rutgers, 13 points in 19 minutes of play. Really kind of mastered that skill here in Evanston. The ability to come off the bench and produce immediately. Mm -hmm. One and a half to go here in this first half. Here's Scaife. And another call against Rutgers. The third personal called on Ariel Butts. <laughs> and Lyon is between the threes and getting to the line, getting her chance to help bring them closer and closer. I predicted a nail biter. I'm sticking to it. It's a look at Holliver. Ice pack on the right knee, coming out in crutches. A good sign to see her back here in this arena. Holliver out. Ariel Butts in foul trouble. Booker struggling. Find someone in that five spot right now today. Ashley Deary. That's what she does. And look how Northwestern has remained patient and has rallied back into this game. This is what Ashley Deary likes to do. Again, she may be small in stature, but she knows exactly how to pick a passing lane. Six turnovers for Rutgers. Really the last four minutes. 350 to be exact. Almost trying to match Northwestern here before the half is done. Well, again, Cynthia Hernandez has returned to the game. Under a minute to play. Inman to Deary. Kicks it out to Maggie Lyon from distance. That was going to be a deep three. Great look. Foul from behind. Northwestern is going to make Sharita Parker earn it. Great drive to the basket. They found her. It's a great outlet. She gets to the rack, but that's a lot of white shirts. How do you pick which one got her first? That was like a team fouling. <laughs> Together we stand. They give it to Nia Coffey for her third. So Joe McEwen can't afford to have her pick up a fourth before this half is done. Just about a nine second differential between game and shot clock. Work it around to Inman. Kristen Inman from the wing. Great hustle. Almost thought we lost Carly Roser. She went flying out of the bounds into the cheerleaders. <laughs> Saved by a pom-pom. Almost knocked down Chrissy Winter Scott. <laughs> she was going to catch her. That is a sideline reporter. Uh, yeah. yeah. Multitasking. Uh-huh. Laney getting her own rebound. Put back. Somehow gets that to fall. Carly Roser ends up going down. 
grabbing her face mask. You see that she's obviously protecting her nose. So Laney goes right into traffic and then gets bumped with an over-anxious Cohen coming from the back. Or Maggie Lyon, excuse me. It's been a quiet first half for Benajah Laney's standards. Just her That's second it. field goal, five points. Half-court shot won't fall. It's a 10-point Rutgers advantage. Scarlet Knights led at one point by 15 in the first half. More turnovers than field goals made in the first 20. Rutgers surviving an, an up-and-down first half as well. Well, this is one of the things that Rutgers has been known for is obviously forcing turnovers, getting out, making transition baskets. And you could see early on, only shooting 35%. This is a very good shooting team, but they've struggled against Rutgers defense. Coffee gets fouled on the shot. Back to Christy Winter Scott with an update on Rachel Holloway. Well, Rachel Holloway went down with a right knee injury. They took her in the back, and they have done x-rays. They have not gotten the results back on those x-rays. She will not return for the second half. Lisa? Certainly hope for the best long term yeah. here for Rachel Holloway. In the meantime, depth could be an issue here for C. Vivian Stringer. Ariel Butts, who came in for Holloway with three fouls. Davis with three. Scaife with three. Good ball movement, good patience. That's the sweet spot. They'll continue to look for that. Deary was going down low to Nia Coffey. Ashley Deary sometimes, or at least in this game early on, has tried to force that pass that hasn't been there. This is her fifth turnover. And again, this is one of the things Northwestern does so well is they protect the basketball. They're very smart. They assist on a lot of made baskets. They execute. the ball movement here. They do a great job of just working the ball around the perimeter, but that's where they need to get it to. How about that bank and that deposit? Whatever falls, Northwestern will take it. Here at this point, down by six. Coffee in double figures. And I think just the only thing that's missing, I just don't see that level of intensity defensively, and I think that's what Coach Joe McEwen was talking about. You see a zone defense, but there's no true aggression, no, no sense of purpose. Laney from the corner. Talked about her quiet first half. Two of eight before that shot. Five points coming into the second. Cohen from oh. deep. Here come the Cats. <laughs> a 7-0 Wildcat run. The Cardiac Cats have been Success, the success that Northwestern has had. 22 wins the most since the mid-90s, 1995 to 96. Full record for wins, 25. They could get through this Big Ten tournament or the NCAA tournament maybe. They could reach that. How about the comeback as of late to start this second half? Well, that's what they do. They have, on the last three road games, they've come from behind and they have won. They found some confidence in their shooting of late. And they're 19 and one when they're leading at the half. But like I said, the last three road games, they're even winning when they're coming from behind. Had a lot of come from behind wins. Down double figures to Michigan. Down double figures to Wisconsin, just to name a couple. Tyler Scaife, off balance shot. This is a game where we've seen some runs here to start these halves. Rutgers opened up a 12 to four run. Northwestern on a current 7-0 run. With Benijah Laney, hard to keep her off the glass, and that was one of the things that Northwestern coach Joe McCune stressed. Scaife. 
Rutgers needed that one. So that indeed a second chance point all brought about because of Laney. Cohen down for two. So we said we'd have a nail biter and it's all part of the Cats coming back in the second half. The biggest of their second half lead. Topper trying to keep it alive into the hands of Ashley Deary. Look at her go. Motor is running. <laughs> She's quick. She can get there. And now you want to know why she's one of the better defenders. Deary gets them going first off the board and the drive. But it's that defense that makes a huge difference for this Northwestern team. Haven't missed here from the floor. What a different start in this second half and the way they opened this game. A perfect four for four in this 20. Three-second call in the lane. That stalls a little bit of the momentum for Joe McEwen. And the Wildcats know all about comebacks. Down by 14 to Purdue, one in overtime. Down by 13 to Michigan. Down by 15 to Wisconsin and one in overtime. Largest lead here today has been 15. So Rutgers determined not to let that happen. They go right back in the paint. Copper can't finish. Rose are running things. Back out to Deary. Sias and Davis was all over Maggie Lyon around that screen. Cohen can't get it. Deary whistled for the foul. Well, I don't know what Coach Joe McEwen said in that locker room, but it was something very important. Wildcats are coming back. Maybe Strayer is not happy about that. Exciting one. Rutgers with a one point advantage over Northwestern. Your 4 5 matchup winner gets Maryland in the Saturday semifinal. And Butts is going to get whistled for her fourth. Talk about the big three before the game. This is what they have done here today. Bet Nigel Laney only with five points. That could be a good thing for Northwestern. Those three typically go off in bunches. That's all you need to know about the way things have been going for Rutgers. <laughs> Butts now with four fouls, and Tyler Scaife with four fouls for the Scarlet Knights. Ashley Deary for two. Northwestern has its first lead of the game. Ashley Deary determined to be in the highlight reel. She has made some big plays down the stretch. She's been the answer. Down by as many as 15. Part of a 13-2 run this half for the Cats. Copper. Lion with the board. And one of the things Coach Joe McEwen said, he said, how about we get some rebounds, get out and run, and it's Deary again. Ashley Deary back-to-back -back buckets. Northwestern, six of seven from the floor. Uh-oh, that was careless. You Here she that. comes. Motors running, accelerators <laughs> going. Pedal to the metal, Ashley Deary. I don't think I've ever seen her this much on fire. She's on her own, eight nothing run. <laughs> My very own. <laughs> Copper. Bucks gets 
it back and puts it back. And again, it's the offensive rebounds that make a huge difference. That's one way Rutgers can fight to stay in this game, and that's the way they will. They will attack the glass with their athleticism and size. Some of everything's falling now. Northwestern at one point and a half shoot about 35%. They are knocking them down now. What a difference a day makes. How about what a difference a half makes? What a difference a deary makes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Really? She has been on fire. Again, don't don't be careless with the basketball around Ashley Deary. Eight of nine field goals here for Northwestern. Well, we just talked about them coming back. The Cardiac Cats, as you call them, they do get back in the second half. Foul there on Carly Roser. You see the mask on Carly Roser. Broke her nose against Purdue. She's been wearing that mask since the Michigan game back on February 14th. Here's a big second half stat. Nia Coffey in the second half, 42% field goals, almost 50% from behind three. So let's see if the coffee heats up. Yep, I had to use it. Right now, 10 points. Here's Maggie Lyon on the transition. You cannot stop the Cats here in this half. Can't stop the Lion. See Vivian Stringer might be waiting for her media timeout. She has not called a timeout. The under 12 is coming. We got a sub coming in. Davis coming in. How about Maggie Lyon? Yep, she's doing her thing. Everybody's getting to the, the steals party. Defense to offense. That's exactly what Coach was looking for. And here it goes again. Coffee leading the break. Gonna take it all away. An offensive foul. Well, that's one of the things that gets her into trouble, but she is a little concerned, Vivian Stringer, because Ashley Deary is giving her fits. Events for Northwestern, and it's happened defensively. Yeah. Social media, you can block those that you don't like. <laughs> and they're doing that left and right. But the steals have turned into baskets. It's one thing to take the ball. It's something else to score off of it. And between Deary and Maggie Lyon, they've done a great job of pushing this game ahead for their team. Let's go to Christy Winter Scott with more on Northwestern. Well, thanks, Lisa. Northwestern entered the tournament having won eight of their last nine Big Ten Conference games. Their only loss during that stretch was to the undefeated Maryland Terrapins. Now, I spoke with Joe McEwen about having the target on their back and how different that was. He said they want to raise the bar of expectation, and they are showing it here in the second half. Certainly is the case. A difference a half makes 27 first-half points. Already 21 for Northwestern. Well, he's definitely one coach for raising the bar. Joe McEwen is only one of 10 coaches to guide over three or more teams into the AP rankings. So he did that late this season with the Wildcats. He also has done it at New Mexico State and George Washington. Deary on the baseline with four to shoot. Rutgers needs a bucket and needs one bad. Six turnovers, four points this half. And this is something that Rutgers not used to. Out to Copper with easy two. Actually, as I was about to say, they're not used to something. They are very used to picking off long passes and turning those into buckets. But what they're not used to is just coming down quickly and just chucking up shots, being taken out of their rhythm. But they've met their match in this defensive Northwestern team. 
here it is, a long pass. Those are very dangerous against Rutgers. Canty gets a good piece, and of course, Copper on the finish. There's the steel story. I wouldn't invite any of them into my house, bunch of thieves. <laughs> oh boy. There's another turnover. It hurt Joe McEwen and Northwestern in the first half. Stalling their charge a little bit here. Fourteen points for Copper. Ten for Scaife, who's got four fouls. And there is Copper. Where has Benajah Laney been here for Rutgers, Vera Jones? You know, good question. She is still diving in for, for rebounds, but offensively, I think they're doing a very good job of just keeping her out of the entire offense. Six rebounds, five points for Laney, but just two of ten here from the floor. Douglas oh, with the take for two. It's almost like the Rutgers defense just froze and watched her finish that layup. See Vivian Stringer calling a quick timeout. She'll need one to discuss this. Watch, three shirts. She just whizzes by everybody. And again, I think part of that foul situation you're talking about, no one wants to make step in and, and, and get called for that. Another foul. And see Vivian Stringer getting a technical foul. So Maggie Lyon will shoot the free throws for Northwestern. C.V. Stringer is going to take this time to talk to her team. Lyon is good on the first. And good on the second. Northwestern trying to get back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since the 96-97 season. Mm -hmm. Is that an NCAA tournament resume? I really believe so. If there were anything that were a little bit raising it was the strength of schedule but again their rpi very strong great wins and again if they can get this win in the tournament i don't think there's any question whatsoever right now a nine point wildcat advantage there's laney trying to get that one to fall now keep in mind they're playing catch up and Cynthia Hernandez comes into the game. We've already talked about how Rutgers is not a three-point shooting team, but there's their three-point yes. shooter. Yes. She knocks it down. She never ceases to amaze me. Just automatic. You want to go from manual to transmission to automatic and put her into the game because she is definitely going to run for you. First shot taken. First shot made. And they sneak her in. Literally, they just sneak her in the game. She runs the baseline. We didn't catch her there. But what they'll do is they'll sneak her along the baseline, and they know it's coming. It's like the biggest, most obvious secret. <laughs> as soon as she gets in the game, I keep telling you she's got one job. It's the shoot threes. Lion ran right into Krista Davis. A double team there on the baseline. Give you some idea before I finish that part. Great job off the end. A right-handed finish for the left-handed Maggie Lyon. She's ambidextrous. Good move. Again, very patient in their offense. They will continue to run screens. Cohen for three. She was going big. <laughs> Terry, the smallest player on the court, gets the rebound and put back. How did that happen? She had to be like the worst kid in the sandbox. She, went, she takes everything. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Never would want to play with her. 
<laughs> 10 over 12 coming in this half. Hernandez thought she got bumped. Wanted the call, won't get it. Crunch time here. We are under eight to play. Who will advance between Northwestern and Rutgers? A spot in the semis on the line. Perfect combination. How about Alex Cohen? The senior responding. Smooth, sweet, just like a Reese's. And look at this. Doesn't get any sweeter than this little one. Ashley Deary just getting in and getting the loose ball. But watch where she comes from. Way up in here. And she just does her thing to get to the basket. I'm just going to get in there. Wherever it is, she just hawks the basketball. And she scores. Pretty amazing how she keeps her eyes focused on getting the ball back all the time. Deary 10 points, Rutgers 9 points in this half. Deary 5 field goals, Rutgers 4 field goals in this half. This time she sticks her hands in, or hand in, and gets a piece of an arm rather than the basketball. It happens. Rutgers right now, no true answer, but good question asked earlier. Benijah Laney, where are you? And truly, in these tough situations, the go-to has always been Kalia Copper. And now they brought in... Rachel Holliday, you see there at the end of yeah. the bench, hurt herself there in the first half. Into some of the depth issues here for Rutgers, some of their key players here in foul trouble. Tyler Scaife is getting ready to check back in. Hey, join the conversation. Hashtag March on BTN. A lot of good stuff happening here in the 2015 Women's Big Ten Tournament. Quarterfinal Friday. with a step through. And we were talking about Rutgers getting the offensive to the offensive glass. Those long rebounds coming back to Northwestern, giving them time to reset and stretch this lead. Seven to shoot. Douglas with Laney all over her. Loses it, and Canty picks it up. Canty oh. down low to Laney for two. Meanwhile, another major mm. foul. That's Syacence Davis, who's on the floor. Rachel Holloway already injured from the first half. Rutgers cannot afford to Not lose one of their key players. Not at all. And this is a very tough, gritty player. So if she's down, we'll see if we can get a look. Just kind of a trip. I think she just kind of went into on the fall. Same side of the floor for both of these players. Olive on crutches. Now that's one of those kind of incidental contact, unfortunately, on a fall. One of their fallen seniors, Syacence Davis, getting... Davis now on the bench. She was able to walk off the floor on her own power, getting tended to by the athletic training staff. Rutgers, even without their top defensive player, pushing the issue a little bit and forcing the turnover here for Northwestern. Well, look for them on pure emotion to just explode right now. Two fallen teammates here for Rutgers today. Trying to make a comeback of their own. Davis continues to get tended to. A Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. 
set the all-time steals record here today. And now Kalia Copper limping a little bit. See her there at the elbow. She was favoring one of her legs. This is a Rutgers basketball team not only trying to win a Big Ten tournament, trying to make the NCAAs. Postseason concerns here for their two fallen teammates. Douglas hits the jumper. Lauren Douglas, one of those players that can connect on three. Not a big, not a big three-point shooter, but she has come up with some big shots in the past. Scaife, who's been in foul trouble, too strong on that attempt. And then Rutgers kind of uncharacteristically launching a few threes. They kind of stopped looking to get inside as they did before. How about that, Pro Hop? Out of nowhere, Roser tried to pick it off. Canty leading the break will pull up from 15 feet. And so Rutgers really won, and they're done. They're coming down, and they're just forcing up the first shot possible Go to the rim. in an effort to play catch-up. Four and a half to play. Deary, ankle breaker. Cohen kicked it out to eat up some time. Krista Evans came on really strong trying to get a piece of that shot, but Deary has perfected the art of shooting it really high. Here's Roser. Copper switches off onto her. Now 10 on the shot clock. Dumps it down to Cohen, gets the body and the foul on Krista Evans. You mentioned Kalia Copper hobbling around as well. This is what happened. Yeah, she too seemed to trip a little bit and was very, very slow getting up. Injuries have been a story for Rutgers. Christy, what more can you tell us? Well, Sias and Davis was adamant about how she was fine and she wanted to go back into the game, but the training staff is taking her to the back into the training room to evaluate her left knee. Again, Olive out with an injury. Davis getting examined. Copper, not 100%. Copper, in fact, two points this half after getting 12 in the first. And the foul trouble. You know, again, that's a strategy that kind of works itself out in the opponent's favor. When you start losing all your players, what else can you do? The woes continuing here in this second half for Rutgers. You talk about a tale of two halves. Mm -hmm. This has been it here today. Parker. Roser saving it for Deary. And Deary will wisely pull it back out. And again, time is on their side. They will eat up as much clock as possible, running through and executing their offense. So we've seen Cohen kick it out with a possible two attempt. Northwestern pulling it back, trying to eat up some time and sit on this 10-point lead. What do we have in store? Injured here in the second half, her team down by 10. Vera Jones, Lisa Bynton with you. It's going to be a tall task and a tall order for Rutgers to make a comeback here. Well, uh, you mentioned before they're struggling. They have players that are in foul trouble. That's going to be difficult. They're without Syasis Davis because defense really does make their offense. It is going to be very, very tough. Out without Rachel Holliday as well. Again, I mentioned they have some postseason concerns trying to get back to the NCAA tournament. Your key wins, the loss to Michigan State, one loss outside of the RPI 80. Strength of schedule in the 90s. RPI 42. Well, I do think in it's... In or out. It's, it's, I, I, you know, the hardest thing to do is when we pull up the resumes and you can't see the rest of the field. But looking at those numbers... I think with the RPI 42 and the 22 wins, I think I think they're looking okay. Trying to get back for the first time since 2011, 2012. 
at one point made 10 straight NCAA tournament appearances. Final four twice, national runner-up in 2007, and they lost to Tennessee in the title game. WNIT champs from last year, they are determined to get back to the NCAAs this year. Well, I do believe, particularly if Syacis Davis and Holloway can turn up healthy, I believe they have a good chance, but I know looking over there, Syacis Davis is either in a lot of pain or feeling a lot of emotion over this game. Syacis Davis, one of the top competitors. Oh. So competitive. You mentioned set the steals record here today. Both getting injured and then coming back. But I tell you what, Tammy, the Arizona State paint points in the second half, 28, really told a great story. Well, well, it did, and it had to be a second half for ASU where they had to do two things. They had to take care of the basketball and get their starters on the floor. Kelsey Moose got started, and then Sophie Bruner and the guards really worked nicely in tandem using that high-low. Here are some more highlights of those paint points that you continue to really does make their offense it is going to be very very tough out without rachel holiday as well again i mentioned they have some postseason concerns trying to get back to the ncaa tournament your key wins the loss to michigan state one loss outside of the rpi 80 strength of schedule in the 90s rpi 42 I do think in it's, or out. it's I, I, you know, the hardest thing to do is when we pull up the resumes and you can't see the rest of the field. But looking at those numbers, I think with the RPI 42 and the 22 wins, I think I think they're looking okay. Trying to get back for the first time since 2011, 2012. At one point, made 10 straight NCAA tournament appearances. Final four twice, national runner-up in 2007. And they lost to Tennessee in the title game. WNIT champs from last year, they are determined to get back to the NCAAs this year. Well, I do believe, particularly if Syacis Davis and Holloway can turn up healthy. I believe they have a good chance, but I know looking over there, Syacis Davis is either in a lot of pain or feeling a lot of emotion over this game. Syacis Davis, one of the top competitors. Oh, so competitive. You mentioned set the steals record here today. So fun to watch. Her and Ashley Deary go at it. Roser try to kick it out to Cohen, and they say Carly Roser stepped on the end line. Christy, what more do you have on Syacin's Davis? Well, it's not good news right now. They're saying that she's not going to be returning for the remainder of the game today. She will be evaluated after the game on her left knee. Lisa? Thank you, Christy. A senior, one of the four seniors on this Rutgers team. They have six juniors, two sophomores, and two freshmen. Scaife with the take. And that's where they're at their best. Rutgers attacking, attacking, attacking off the bounce. They get inside the key, like to make it into that little sweet spot, the big. <laughs> that's where the big shots come from. That's why it's on the floor. Not really, but, you know, just making a point. I know what you meant. <laughs> two more games to play here on the network. The first of those two, Nebraska and Iowa, in a third meeting between the Huskers and Hawkeyes. Game that went into overtime between those two earlier this year. This is the first meeting. Of course, that's when Nebraska had Rachel Terrio. The Huskers handling the pressure without her against an Illinois team last night. Natalie Romeo was huge, big, big threes. Down to Cohen, and Butts got a piece of that. 
I think you called it a tale of two halves, although this one isn't over with yet. Rutgers can be very, very determined. determined. They can score in bunches, and let's not forget, they've got a legendary coach over there. 13 points this half for Rutgers. Down low to Laney for two, and a quick timeout for Rutgers. Rutgers are, but you hit that first one. Yep. She's like a Melissa Dixon. You can really heat up, and we'll see two of the top three-point shooters in that matchup. Dixon hit one of those Melissa Dixon streaks in her senior day mm -hmm. against Minnesota. She is. You want to talk about, well, she's the best three-point shooter in the country. On paper, can't argue with that. Rutgers has got to stop the clock or get a turnover. They almost got the turnover. And again, you're going to see that pressure rusher, Rutgers defense, but they handle it just fine. Coffee with the finish. <laughs> Finish from skate. She goes through untouched again. That's where that defense of Sias and Davis, you kind of miss it. No one attacks the dribble like she does. And the Scarlet Knights stop the clock. The Knights are making Davis, a senior, Holloway, a junior. First Buckeyes is a matchup between huh. two of the players of the year, and you see mm -hmm. Brenda Freeze scouting out who her next opponent's going to be. At the line for it's always a joy to watch Ohio State's Kelsey Mitchell and Amherst Austin. They put up numbers <laughs> in bunches. They can score. Northwestern hoping to get to the semis. Program has not had a lot of Big Ten tournament success. This year is a special one here so far for the Cats. Copper butts on the rebound and put back. And Butts has fouled out of the game. Well, we talked about the high foul situation, and so there goes another. Your tournament history, four wins all time, one and six under Joe McEwen. This is a Northwestern program that saw a lot of head coaching change after Don Pirelli was there for 15 years. June Olkowski was there for five, Beth Combs for four, and then Joe McEwen was hired in 2008. Look at the reaction here from Rutgers. Carly Roser at the line for Northwestern, two shots. He's done an outstanding job of turning this program around, and a huge piece of what he did was recruit that recruiting class from last season. The freshman class that are all now sophomores that are part of five players averaging in double figures. Mia Coffey, Ashley Deary, and Kristen Inman. Looking to win nine of its last ten. Coffey with the rebound. Carly Roser here to finish things off for Northwestern. If there's any lesson learned from this game and other teams watching or anybody watching is that when you're given a second half, you just never know. Because it did look very good for Northwestern early on, but they went in, they closed the gap, and then they came out just a, a totally different team in that second half. And Carly Roser, an example of unselfishness. One of the upperclassmen here on this team. Laney for three. Not necessarily a three-point shooter. She drills that one. Five seconds to play. How much Ashley Deary has stepped up or stepped into that leadership role in the 
point guard position, really, really making great decisions this year as opposed to when she was a freshman still learning. But even then, her tenacity was just all over the place. Very impressive. Stays a five-point deficit. Here's your final. 62 to 57. The cat comeback complete. Northwestern will face the